All right, welcome back to Self Principle. As always, I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi. Now, despite all of the videos that we've done on this topic, there still continues to be a lot of miscommunication when it comes to these things called non-nutritive sweeteners going on. Remember, these are things like aspartame, saccharin, uh, sucralose, which is Splenda, and of course, stevia going on amongst other things. And the question really is, is do these non-nutritive sweeteners affect how our sugar response occurs. Well, let's take a look at the data and see what's new in terms of the research realm. But before we dive in, let's talk about a study that kind of made everybody feel like these uh, non-nutritive sweeteners were really not that harmful. And that's a meta-analysis of randomized trials that was published in the Cochrane database back in 2020. Now, in this particular study, which was a meta-analysis, they looked at nine trials. They had about 979 participants that were included in the analysis. And what they said was that basically there wasn't any difference between the groups in terms of their body weight, in terms of their sugars going on at the end of the period, and there were really no difference in adverse outcomes either. The issue was that none of the studies were found to have a low risk for bias. In other words, a lot of these studies could have been biased in a number of ways going on, so that actually hurts the validity of the studies going on. But really, the the bottom line that the folks were trying to go after and where the headlines got picked up was that these non-nutritive sweeteners, they're essentially inert and they don't affect our metabolism in any way going on. All right. So if you believe that already, then you can stop the video right there. We don't have to talk about this new study. Let's now talk about this new study that was just published in Cell in 2022. And in this particular one, it's a really well-designed study. So let me give you a little bit of the methods of the study going on, and then we'll dive into the results a little bit. So in this particular one, they picked people who had good metabolic health and who really, they were not taking these non-nutritive sweeteners before the study going on. And they had six different groups in the study. So four groups, they received three fixed doses of non-nutritive sweeteners per day going on. Then the fifth group, they received essentially a glucose supplement going on. And the sixth group, they received no supplements. So the four non-nutritive sweetener groups, they were basically getting either aspartame, saccharin, sucralose, or stevia. Those were the four groups going on. And one of the things that's really cool about the study is how well designed it was. So the study had three distinct periods. The first seven days of the study was really just to measure all the baseline stuff going on. They were doing all sorts of different tests. And then there was 14 days where they actually had exposure to the four non-nutritive sweeteners or glucose or control going on. And then there was basically seven days after the study to just get some more measurements going on. All right. So what were they measuring? So the first and most obvious thing was they wanted to see the effects on glucose metabolism. So they actually were doing nine separate glucose tolerance tests on these folks going on. And they had all of them getting continuous glucose monitors so they could get all sorts of readings on their sugars going on throughout the entire 29-day period of the study going on. In addition to that, they also wanted to see, are there any changes in the gut microbiome? So they were using stool testing to look for any differences there going on. And then lastly, they were using these germ-free mice to essentially see. So they were using the germ-free mice and they were putting the microbiome specimens of participants from different uh, non-nutritive sweetener groups. And what they wanted to see was what would happen to their gut microbiome. Were there any changes to these mice's gut microbiome specific to these non-nutritive sweeteners, especially when these mice are germ-free? Now, the study had about 120 adults going on, 65% were women, and the average age was about 29 going on. Okay, so what are their findings? This is what we're here for. So what they found was that saccharin, sucralose, aspartame, and stevia, all four, they all altered both the intestinal and the oral microbiome. This is important because in this really well-designed study goes against some of the previous data, which wasn't as well-designed and had a higher risk of bias going on. This one is really well-designed, and what it shows is all non-nutritive sweeteners, all four of them in this case, they all impacted. Then on top of that, saccharin and sucralose, 
they actually raised the sugar more inside the body going on. So there were higher glucose values compared to the group that was just getting the glucose tolerance, um, the glucose supplements going on. So in other words, these two non-nutritive sweeteners, their response on sugar was definitely higher compared to previous data that said, you know, if you take any of these things, it's not going to affect you. On the other hand, aspartame and stevia, they did not affect any of the glucose tolerance tests going on. But when it came to things like stevia, stevia actually had higher levels of plasma insulin going on. And what's insulin going to do? It's going to take your calories if you're not using them, and it's going to shuttle them into fat going on. So a lot of information going on. Let's summarize and make sure that you understand the bottom line here. So as you think about it, the bottom line here is that when we say that non-nutritive sweeteners are inert, I don't think that's the case. If anything, non-nutritive sweeteners, whether it's um, sucralose going on or Splenda or Stevia or saccharin going on or aspartame going on, they do affect your gut microbiome. They do affect your glucose tolerance test, specifically Splenda, and they do affect the insulin and how much insulin is secreted in your body, specifically with Stevia. So as you're thinking about this and saying, well, what should I do in my own diet? It's very simple is try to reach for whole foods always as a first choice going on. And if you are somebody who likes a little bit of sugar, that's fine. Just realize that it's not the end all be all. And if you have cravings for it, you got to make sure that you are able to control those. So for several years now, I never put any sugar in my coffee. My coffee always has a little bit of unsweetened almond milk and that tastes plenty sweet for me going on. So it's worked great, but that doesn't mean that would work good for you. But as always, try to look at these data and try to incorporate the final findings into your own diet, which really means is if you can avoid these non-nutritive sweeteners, it would be better. As always, I want to thank you so much for checking out this episode. If you have any questions, please put it in the comments. I'll be sure to make sure I address them in a future video going on. Otherwise, as always, I'll see you guys next time.